This is the site of St Connell's Chapel, lying above Kirkconnell in East Ayrshire, lying just beneath the Kirkton Hills. The story of St Connell's has literally been lost in the mists of time. One version is St Mungo, who was at the time escaping from enemies from Glasgow, sought shelter in these hills. A shepherd took him in, and to say thanks he offered to take the shepherd's son, Connell, back to Glasgow, now that things had settled, and he was ordained as a priest. He returned here and his first step was to establish a church, a cross rather, made of sticks or wood up by St Connell's Well. Later a wooden church would have been established at this site. As the years went by, the wooden church was replaced by a stone one. And we know that in 1681, the last minister, Samuel Howard, who refused to take the test for King James II. That is, he refused to take the, the test as a Roman Catholic. And as a result of that, the, the, the church here was abandoned. We do know that this was the original site of the Kirkton of Connell. Kirkconnell itself was established in 1729 when a new church was built at the site of the present church and Connell, as we know it, began to grow. There are several of the stones from this church incorporated into the stonework of the present-day Connell Church. And an old cross base is used as a font. When they were doing the restoration work here, a large number of stones, engraved stones, were found in these walls. And most of those now under shelter. Above us here, the monks had a leper colony at one time. It's also said that they were the first people in this district to mine coal. Most of the gravestones here used to stand horizontally, used to stand on stone feet at one point. They've now all been lost. Here's one gravestone that shows uh, fairly clear engravings. stones that were found at, at uh, St Connell's, first of all in about 1926 when the first excavations took place and then there have been other later restoration and excavation. These on the left here are mostly uh, 18th century stones. Central section are uh, up to the 9th century. Some show what they call insular fusion, that is a Celtic style cross with uh, the Anglian style influence as well. There are obviously one time a number of crosses within this churchyard. For example of carvings of swords. And this side here, these are the stones from the church itself. So some would be from the windows, some from doors. 
door surrounds and so on. Another version of the history of Connell links him with De Connell or Holywood Abbey not far from Dumfries. It's said that the lands up here, a parcel of land, was held by Holywood Abbey. This is the miners' memorial cairn. There was a miners' strike on, and the local minister asked the miners to come up here to help to excavate what was then a very overgrown mound of earth, near enough, very little was visible. And they used these stones, ones that were left over from the excavations, to commemorate the restoration work that they'd done. It itself has been restored in recent years. Connell's grave is said to be up on the hillside, where he could see the three churches that he'd established in Upper Nithsdale. The churchyard here has been in use right up until almost the present day. Despite the new church being built at Kirkconnell, St. Connell's can continue to be revered as a place for burial, particularly for local families. There's some graves, people here from Kirkton, the house that's a little more than half a mile or so from here. <laughs> 